Yo, huge fan. Uh, <laughs> I used to be those guys outside in the signs, and I used to be huddled in my room in Oakland watching you on YouTube. <laughs> so, watching these guys get destroyed. <laughs> um, uh, so, one of my, my question is, uh, have you been keeping up with what's going on with Roger Stone, and what your thoughts, and your thoughts on maybe some of the jurors or the the judge that might be going against him. So, to be honest also, with you, I haven't uh, followed... Also, Epstein didn't kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll admit, that's, that's never going to stop being funny. Um, but the... Okay, but... Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a good answer on this. I haven't been watching the Stone stuff too closely because... Honestly, my, my focus has been on impeachment gate 2019, all, all that kind of stuff. So I've, I've been really watching that pretty closely. I wish I had a better answer on Stone. If you have another question you want to ask it, go for it, because that answer on Stone's not good. Oh, actually, yeah, there was a guy outside, Felix, he's a really nice guy, talking about health care is a right for everyone. Uh -huh. And he brought up some stuff I'd never even heard of, like France, Japan, and Singapore have a two-tier system for health care. Yes. He believes health care is a, right, uh, a human right for everyone. And he brought up that, you know, if you had enough money, you could pay for it, or there's a government one. Um, and these are just ideas that I never heard before, and uh, yeah. maybe what are your thoughts on how you would refute that? So there, there are a couple of basic questions. Uh, the, the framework I like to use when I'm talking about healthcare and thinking about healthcare uh, is that healthcare, you can have three attributes of healthcare. Affordability, quality, universality. Right? It can be cheap, it can be good, and it can be for everyone. But you can only have two of those things. You can't have all three. There is no program that is cheap and good and for everyone. It just does not work that way. Right? If, it's, if it's cheap and it's universal, then you're going to end up with rationing, which is sort of what you have in Canada and the UK. If you, have, if you have universal and good, it ends up being pretty expensive. And that's kind of what you have in the United States, sort of, because the truth is that there is basically universal health care in the sense that if you go to the hospital, they can't turn you away. But it's very expensive in the United States. Now, it's also on demand. You can get, like, we are the world's, the truth is the world has a two-tier health care system. It goes like this. You live in a socialized country, and then if you have money, you come here for your surgeries. Right? But... The, but the, the question is what kind of health system you would like to create. The health system that I would prefer is one that is cheap and good, but not completely universal. And then the gaps are filled by charity hospitals, the gaps are filled by local government. The reason for that is because the vast majority of medical innovation happens in the United States. It's very easy for everybody to live off the legacy of the fact that all of the, all of the best drugs are created here, all the best surgeries are invented here, that all of the stuff that the rest of, I mean, it's basically like the American economy, right? The American economy goes south, everybody is toast. Well, if the American medical innovation system goes south, everybody is toast. There are no new medicines that are being created. So a free market system incentivizes the creation of new, better surgeries. It incentivizes more doctors. There are doctor shortages in a lot of these places. Singapore is, is I mean, we can get into the vagaries of all of these systems. They're all very, very different. Um, but what I would suggest is that America needs to move in a more free market direction because more free market means lower prices generally and more innovation. It doesn't achieve universality for people, for example, who have pre-existing conditions on insurance. That's where you need charity to come in and, as, again, as a last resort, maybe local government. This will be the last question. <laughs> 